Happy New Year everyone! Happy New Year! I hope you're as excited about the New Year as I am. I hope and I pray that everyone's well, but even if you're not, I hope you're well on your way to recovery and I hope that you are still grateful that you have and you are here to see the New Year. So today we'll be talking about gratitude, we'll be talking about joy, we'll be talking about a lot of things well mainly about gratitude and about joy and about learning about our creator and how we learn about him and how we get closer to him and how we tell him and show him thanks and praise so we've got craft from luke ahead and we've got a talk from phil to tell us more so i hope you enjoy all right I'll catch you later bye Good morning and welcome to Roadrunners. Today we are going to be making something called a joy jar. So what I've got is I've actually got an old, well it's not an old, I've got a cereal container. You can use any jar you like. It's good to have a lid. I like this one because he's got a little slidey lid. I've got some blue paper, I've got my pens, sellotape and scissors. And what we're going to do is we're going to decorate the outside of this jar with some paper. And what you really need to do, the main thing you need to focus on, is making sure that when you put your paper on, there's a gap down the side so that you can see in. So you can cover all but one side or one part of your jar, whatever you're using. I'm going to cut that so the bottom is sorted. I wasn't cut very straight, that's fine. Now, because I'm using masking tape, to sellotape it on, I'm actually going to put the masking tape as though it's a pattern. And 
And now I'm going to simply decorate my paper with things that make me think of joy. So anything that makes you think of joy, doodle it, scribble it, draw it, write it on your bit of paper. So that's my rough joy jar. So now I'm going to peel this off carefully. Get my container. Thankfully in this container there's a nice edge at the top to line it up to. And then push it all the way around. It's better if you've got double-sided tape. I don't in my house at the moment. Now hopefully you can make yours look a lot neater than mine. Put your lid on and what you're going to do is as you go about your day, as you go about your weeks, this year you will always have a moment where something will happen and you'll be like, that made me really smile, that made me feel really joyful. Maybe God blesses you with something that you weren't expecting. Maybe you just had a really good day at school and you came home and you just thought, you know what, today was a good day. What I want you to do is, when that happens is write a date. So I'm going to write down... We're going to write these notes down and we're going to put them, hold them up and then post them in the box. And on those days that you feel a little bit low, you feel like nothing has gone your way and you're just a bit stressed, what you're going to do is you're going to come to your box you can take the lid off. You're going to randomly pick one out. You're going to read it. Thank God for what that was. And I'd love to see full boxes before the end of the year. Even better before the end, before summer, if you could get a full box. But fill up your joy jars because they are moments of joy that God's given you, and they're good to remember the things that God has done. So that is our joy jar and our craft for this week. Happy New Year, and welcome to our first Roadrunners of 2021. Have you made any New Year's resolutions this year? How well are you doing at keeping them? Today's day 10, so you're doing quite well. I hope you had a great Christmas and New Year. I'm sure it was a bit different, but I hope you enjoyed yourself. I spent lots of time on Zoom and FaceTime, but I was able to open presents with my sister's family live and have lots of Lego or craft completion progress updates. I played some online games, we had family quizzes, as well as just enjoying chatting and chilling with people that I like spending time with. So although it was different, I still really enjoyed the time. Now, I don't know if any of you were allowed to stay up on New Year's Eve, but my nephew Jonah was, and he had everything planned out. He made sure there was music, and disco lights. He kept checking in to make sure we all knew how long it was to go and he planned when he would have Jaffa cake breaks. For energy, of course. But most importantly, he had his pre-planned midnight feast ready. I mean, it would be silly to stay up to midnight and not have one, wouldn't it? When midnight came and we all said, Happy New Year and watched the fireworks on TV, I think he had more energy and excitement than any of the other grown-ups or older children on our Zoom call. So, shout out to Joe, as I know he watches. Now, today's story is also about a big celebration in the Bible. The occasion was the return of the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, and the exciting person who organised the event was King David. Now, the Ark of the Covenant was nothing to do with a big boat and Noah. That's a completely different story. The Ark of the Covenant was a special box that God had told Moses to build, and it stored the Ten Commandments and other special items from the journey to the Promised Land. It was a precious reminder of God's prophet promise or covenant to his people. But it's actually much more than a precious old gold box. It was the representation of God's presence with the Israelites, a holy object. And before our story begins, it had been captured by the Philistines, and then they gave it back, and then it had been left with a priest for a number of years. But David decided that the Ark needed to come back to Jerusalem and he wanted to have a massive parade with music and singing to celebrate. He chose special outfits for all the priests to wear and he picked the best musicians to play the instruments and he himself chose all the songs 
and led the parade. We can read some of what they sang in 1 Chronicles 6, 8 to 12. Thank God, call out his name. Tell the whole world who he is and what he has done. Sing to him, play songs for him, broadcast all his wonders, revel in his holy name. God seekers be jubilant, study God in his strength, seek his presence day and night. Remember all the wonders he performed, the miracles and judgments that came out of his mouth. And there's plenty more to read if you want to look it up. It goes on for a few more verses yet. Now, you might recognise these words if you get Luke's Bible calendar emails each week as he included them this week, and he thought they were nice encouraging words to start the year. Because the important thing, that was, although David was organising an awesome celebration, and I'm sure it was loads of fun, remembering who God is and what he had done for them was the most important part of this celebration. Now the great thing is God is still doing great things, and he's doing them for all of us, and he will do them again and again. So if we're feeling happy, then we should celebrate and thank God for all that he's done for us. And if maybe lockdown life is difficult for you and you're feeling sad or fed up, we can remember what God has done for us in the past and that he's with us right now. And right at the start, I mentioned New Year's resolutions. One of mine is to remember what God has done for me, no matter how I am feeling. Maybe that could be one for you as well. I hope you've enjoyed your morning with us and you've learnt a lot from Phil's talk and I hope you enjoy the craft as well with Luke. I think I can't wait, I can't wait to make my joy ja. So that will really, really help in my day to day believing and trusting in God and, and just showing gratitude. So I wish you a lovely week ahead, a week full of gratitude, a week full of joy and a week full of learning more about our Creator. So I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.